present today about brand awareness. And we are recording. So um, one of the things that I think we wanted to emphasize when we put this workshop together is that um, brand awareness is something I think most people assume is just for when you're reaching out to uh, one type of audience, and usually that's customers. And then, of course, many people think that your brand is only important if you have a consumer facing product. But I think one of the things we wanted Natalie to emphasize today is that uh, your brand is something that's important regardless of what audience you're speaking to, whether that's uh, possible investors, possible, of course, possible customers, but also employees and other stakeholders who may want to be engaged with your uh, company or startup. So uh, we are happy that Natalie is a part of our team. You are welcome to request time with her. Um, and that is done through our website and our portal, um, our entrepreneur and residence portal. So if you have questions beyond this workshop, um, she is here for you and we hope that you will engage with her. And I am going to move away and let Natalie uh, get going since we are starting a little bit um, late. If you want to, in, if you're online and want to introduce yourself in the chat, be, please feel free to do so. Um, but we're going to skip our in-person introductions because I know Natalie has a lot of content to cover and we'd love to have you do that. So welcome, Natalie. Thanks so much for having me. I did get an invite list early, or maybe it was last night. So I kind of scanned through to see who was going to be here, but I know there's been a few signups since then. So welcome everyone. Um, if you've been wondering how you can improve your efforts and reach more potential customers or the right customers or stakeholders, like Laura said, or get more sales or increase brand awareness, then I recommend a brand audit. I actually go through this process with a lot of the um, companies or startups that are referred to me through the EIR program um, in different formats. And so this is the first time I've actually put it all together in a presentation with fillable worksheets in hopes that you can use these and take them back to your team to start doing some of these steps on your own. So I also appreciate your feedback on this since I'm doing it presentation style instead of one-on-one -on -one with each of you through the program. But that's not to say you shouldn't sign up for a chance to go through this one-on-one -on -one because there are um, six steps and I say that they're easy, but they're, they're easy in a template, but they are actually a little more difficult. So I'd love to go through them with you um, in person. Uh-oh, now I'm gonna press all the buttons. There we go. So why your startup or company needs to conduct a brand audit? Um, maybe it's because you want to um, increase your marketing efforts or they're not producing the results that you want or maybe your website traffic is low, or maybe you don't even know if your website traffic is low because you don't have someone on staff to check those stats for you. Um, maybe your sales have dropped off and it's supposed to be your busiest time of year. These are all reasons that you should consider a brand audit. However, you may be sitting here thinking, you know, you have a pretty good return on your marketing investment or your startup or your business is doing pretty well. That's great, but you aren't immune to needing a brand audit either. So let me show you why. So even if you are doing well or you think you're doing well, or maybe you received some grants or some money and you think it's all good. Um, I've worked with startups that are in that position, but their brand was not solid. For example, they grew really quickly before they had a solid brand strategy or their visual identity wasn't clear because their internal strategy was poor and they were not consistent in their branding efforts company-wide. For example, using different fonts on documents that go out of the company or having different variations of their logo. Or one time I went to a meeting and I got business cards from five people from the same company and every card looked different. And I'm like, whoa, who are you? So I've worked with a lot of different companies who built websites very early on, but then they grew and then their website content and imagery didn't properly reflect like where they were at at that point in their company. In their, their, um, their business timeline. So if any of this sounds familiar to you, um, then consider a brand audit. So what exactly is a brand audit? Um, I consider a brand audit to be a process that you use to analyze how your brand is performing in the market and against the competition. Um, it's pretty analytical. 
and uses a lot of studies and data um, to come up with your brand. These include understanding your target market, an ideal customer or stakeholder, if you're not quite to customer level yet, um, knowing your overall strategy and goals for marketing, um, really understanding visual messaging and storytelling through your marketing efforts. And that can be kind of difficult sometimes for some technical startups, the storytelling process. So tune into that component of our six steps. Um, I consider in the brand audit, audit advertising strategies linked to marketing goals. I think that should be considered customer experience and success, um, even after a purchase or using your technology. Uh, and then of course, brand awareness and positioning in the marketplace. So those are the components of the brand audit that we are going to touch on today. The first is conducting a SWOT analysis. And I know this is kind of like pretty elementary and you've probably all had to do it for a business plan or something that you've put out there in the world uh, for help. Um, but I want you to think about it from a marketing perspective. It's a great way to find out some things in your business that are doing well marketing wise and others that are not. It also, um, I use it to pinpoint strengths and weaknesses in your brand. This is usually a process that I take a client through without them knowing we're doing a SWOT analysis so that I can better understand, oh, they've got some good things happening here. Let's look into that further. Or, oh, there are some shortcomings here. Let's address that before we move on because if we don't now, it's gonna come back and uh, affect us later on. So um, I, used to work with a med tech company. And so this next phrase kind of resonated with me, but I once read that a brand audit is like taking a course of antibiotics, doing it halfway might help, but the effects won't last until you finish it. So think about that. Um, I recognize that SWOT analysis is a little basic, but I did include in your packet here, a SWOT analysis that you can fill out. There is a page here that runs you through the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats as they relate to marketing. And then I also have for you a fillable um, sheet that you can use. And so I know that we don't have time to go through all of these templates today. And I do encourage you, if you have a team or folks that you work with to take this back and do this as a group or make copies and give them to others and then compile them together. Sometimes I find it better when you do them individually. So, you know, that one person in the group won't strong arm you into putting something else down. So um, this is step one. And I do encourage you to take a time, take time to look through it because there are things uh, I've noticed with startups where there, you don't have marketing expertise on the team. And so that can be difficult in moving on to the next kind of, uh, step in your brand audit, um, but maybe you do have a marketing person on the team and that's a great strength to have and they can help lead you through some of these next steps. Um, so I, I list some examples on this page. Do take a look at it and fill out that uh, SWOT analysis. The second step is a brand audit survey. I generally do this as a, an electronic survey that I send to the point people in the startup or the company that I'm working with so that I can get a lot of good information back from them. This is an internal uh, survey and it, it's gonna be helpful for you to try one of these too. Uh, there is a, another worksheet for you right here. And I came up with um, an abbreviated list of some of the questions that I would put on an internal brand audit survey. Uh, some of these questions you might not be able to answer. And so that's a good thing to make a check mark next to because it's important to come back to that. Um, the results of this survey help to answer a lot of questions that lead us on to the next step. But some of the questions that I usually ask or uh, what do users find when they search for your brand on search engines? Like, can they find you if you have a website? Is your website easy to navigate? And um, are your emails being opened? Maybe you don't even know if they're being opened. So that's something to consider. Are your links being clicked? What do other people, what do you think other people think of your brand? Um, 
Is your visual branding coherent? Is it consistent with your messaging? Does your logo represent you? That's a really interesting one. I've been with companies where we've done a whole logo refresh and then we've done it again. And so there are opportunities to expand on your original efforts because maybe your logo isn't resonating with your key stakeholders. Um, have you ventured into storytelling? Do you know what storytelling is and have, have those efforts been successful for you? If you're doing any type of advertising, are you getting a good return on your investment? Um, if you have physical products that you're selling, are they selling? Um, that might not apply to everyone, but it's something to consider. Uh, packaging is another thing that I work on with folks, like is the, especially as because of COVID and needing to ship things out, like is the packaging work? Does the packaging that you put your product in work? Um, are things arriving intact in the way they need to be to the end customer? Um, are your customers recommending you and how do you know if they are? And lastly, do your employees feel proud to work with you? So this is certainly an internal uh, survey that I include in a brand audit. And those answers really help to shed light on some important components of your marketing efforts. If you have questions, feel free to um, interrupt or ask. I have a terrible habit of over-caffeinating before presentations because I'm nervous and then I talk really fast. So feel free to either put something in the chat if you're tuning in virtually or raise your hand or shout out if you're in the room. Um, the third step is reviewing your digital presence. Um, understanding the effectiveness of your digital presence and your how it's targeting your intended market is very important. You can use your social media analytics if you are on social media to tell how well your social media marketing is working, but that could be directed to a very specific audience, so don't rely on those stats alone. Um, you could use your website analytics, but if you've found already either going through your SWOT analysis or getting feedback from your internal staff that maybe your website really isn't that great, I wouldn't rely on those website analytics necessarily. So um, that's why I like this digital existence template here, where you can put in all of the platforms that you are using from a digital perspective, and then um, talk about what you hope to accomplish with those platforms. I might even in the future extend this to have another tab because I feel like as I've worked with startups, they might be on a lot of different platforms, but they don't remember who set it up or how to get into it to update it, or they've had turnover in their staff or interns that help and you have information out there that's no longer correct and you can't figure out how to change it. So it's good to also use this checklist as an audit of how to access all of your platforms as well. So please keep that in mind. Um, but it's good to go through this and fill in and you might need a couple copies of this if you're on a lot of different platforms because I want you to think broadly of including all sorts of things on here besides just website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like if you have a phone service where you have a message or routing, like think about that's part of your brand. That's a voice talking to someone that's like a first touch or think about um, signature in your email or your email or an email service um, or a platform where you list your information for searchability, um, whatever it might be. It's yes. I was just gonna add some of those things. Oh yes. Like, uh, a lot of people Especially our companies aren't usually using Google My Business, and Google My Business is like a huge thing now, and Google has put a lot of effort into that, um, and it's a great tool to use, regardless of what your pres other presence is digitally. And then another thing is, of course, if you have an email newsletter, do you are you getting news, are you getting emails from people? How what are you doing with them? How are you using that? Right. So that's really important. I I am in the midst of two email um, marketing efforts where we're trying to figure out like how can we better um, boost the open rate and are we segmenting our information and sending it out to the right audiences like 
there's there's so many different things to consider. First, we had to figure out who started the MailChimp account and then how to get in. And then once we got in, we've started to get to work. Um, but that is that is correct. You also said, what was the one thing before email you said, Laura? Google, Google, Google my business. My business. Uh, that is more important than ever with um, especially brick and mortars that have differentiating store hours because of staffing levels or holidays or I can't tell you how many times we've showed up somewhere and they're closed because Google says they're open, but there's not someone on staff that changed the hours. I work with quite a few brick and mortars that are commerce based and we're posting updates of any type of changes to the hours. It's very important and you get a lot of traffic and visibility on there. So even if you aren't selling product in a store in town, it's still good to have one for your business and allow that to grow with you. So include that on here maybe make a note of that so you can add that on there. Um, a few notes about website uh, analy analytics. Um, some of the things that I like to look at as you're thinking about your digital presence is where your web traffic is coming from. Um, is your website attracting your target audience? Um, and what's your bounce rate and what's your conversion rate? So those are some things to think about with your website and you might not have the answers to those right now or someone on staff to check that out. So that is an important part of the brand audit that I could certainly spend some EIR hours working through with you to help figure some of that out. Um, external. Step four is questioning your customers. It's important to consider them in your brand audit. You've heard from your internal partners with the survey that we talked about. Uh, you started diving in deeper to learn about your customers through your digital presence. And now it's really important before we move forward to hear from your external partners, your customers or your key stakeholders. So I um, would recommend that you consider creating a survey to conduct with your customers or key stakeholders or people um, who might have heard of your brand but aren't customers yet, if you can find them. These should be people that don't work with you or are not um, living in the same house as you or related to you. Like none of those people count. These are people that don't know any personal stuff about you in the business. So ex very external. Um, it can be easy to rely on web and social numbers alone, but this like I said, will not give you a complete picture of the whole uh, process. Um, you can conduct surveys by telephone or by email um, or on your website, all sorts of ways to conduct surveys. Um, I like to include a mixture of different types of feedback to get a more rounded view of what people think about your company. Understanding the customer experience at each touch point is important um, for your brand audit. And there's plenty of data available to help um, really give you a better idea of how people perceive your brand. And doing a survey like this could also uncover some questions that can't really easily be defined by just data alone. So I have another handout for you to help you come up with some questions to ask your external stakeholders or customers these types of questions. Um, I break them down by cognitive, emotional, descriptive, and action-based experiences. I will let you read these on your own, but I, I break down kind of what each of these means and then also give some examples of what those questions are on the second page. So I'm giving you like lots of, uh, of my tools. Just like, here you go, take them because I think they're important to, for you to think about and it will really help you realize, man, we really should do this. Um, what time is it? We have time to go through a couple of these. So cognitive questions uncover concepts and associations that a customer connects with your brand. Emotional are questions that will help you gauge the, that emotional connection a customer feels with your brand. Um, descriptive, what kind of language do customers use when describing your brand to others? That's a really good one to know because that will help you understand better your tone and your voice that you use when you come up with content to push out on your website or social media when you're targeting your customers. Um, Action-based experience, that's like asking your customers about their positive and negative experiences with your, your brand. Um, 
and learning more about the performance of your customer service team. Maybe you don't have one yet. Maybe you need one. That's an important part of your brand, especially in how they speak to your company. Any questions on customer survey? I don't know if it's within here or not, but we have a lot of companies that have changed their names along their journey as young companies. Yes. Or maybe should change their name because oh. it's not clear to their customers what they do. Can you speak a little bit to the, the pros and cons of that? Um, you know, they had something that sounded like a research project to begin with, but now they're a company, and how do you make that conversion? Oh, I've been along this journey a couple of times. Um, oh, that, that's a whole other, uh, that's, a, that's a whole other topic. That would be a great topic to talk about. Um, so there, there's a lot of psychology that goes into a company name or to a, a, a product name and associated graphics and colors that go along with it. We'll, we'll touch on that just a little bit here coming up in um, one of these next slides. But um, it, I... When I, I first worked with a startup that went into a name change, I was like, oh gosh, everybody knows their name. How could we change it at this point? And I realized, no, not everybody knew their name. We hadn't even sold a product yet. Like the name wasn't working hard enough. And then we found out that somebody took out uh, a trademark for a very comparable name and we didn't get it in in time and it was time to change. Well, we had to change. And so we went through a naming process and we didn't submit that name in time either. And then it got gobbled up. So we went through a whole other process, this time even broader, asking more people for feedback. Do you like this or do you like this? Or how does this one make you feel? Or we got some really fun feedback about different names that we went through and thought of as it relates to the product. And once we heard their feedback, we're like, oh, okay, I can see where this is coming from. Because when you work so closely with that name or that product, and you use it every day, like it's, you know, like, you know, it like the back of your hand, it feels natural to you, but you want your end customer to really um, feel like they connect with it and understand it. Um, you shouldn't have to describe who you are because your name is so abstract. Like, you know, I think we've all seen where the logo has to be a word with a phrase underneath it just to describe who they are or what that product is. And that that not that might not always work long term. So um, it really is a process to go through. Oh, I have all sorts of steps for that process too. Um, but that is part of your brand. And that does affect a lot of your messaging, whether you have a tagline or a slogan. Sometimes you can even bypass even having a tagline and a slogan if you're name or your product name or your company name is descriptive enough. Um, so I don't know if that speaks to your question, but I hope that that brings up some questions, things that you can think about as it relates back to your, your company or your experience as startups. Yeah. Can I say that an organization that has debated for at least the uh, 10 years or so, Laura. <laughs> our name <laughs> robots and all what we do. So, I know it's painful. <laughs> I gave up on that. <laughs> it is. And I, I will go over something else in a second here, but we do have, um, when you change your name or your product name or your color scheme, there's a whole lot of things that you're going to have to go through and update when you do it. So don't just do it on a, a whim because one person said something that made you feel like, oh, like think about it and make sure you go through an actual dedicated process and understand what your intentions are and your goals are before you just set off and, and change it. Because there are a lot of things that you are going to have to update on this checklist of your brand audit checklist. Oh, wrong one, that's my notes. This one, your brand audit checklist. So, this is kind of my brain dump of all the things that I could think about on a checklist of that I consider related to your brand. Um, I don't even need my notes for this. Okay, so I break it down into brand assets, social, brand elements, website, and customer experience. And if you do go through a name change or a logo change or product change, 
you're going to have a lot of things to update. And so that is also a financial investment. So make sure when you do it, you've checked all the boxes, you've worked with the right attorney, you've got the mark in, you've gone through everything before you go and, and change everything. Um, important part of your brand and oftentimes difficult, I find, as I work with startups or even just companies that have been around for a long time, is what is your description? Like, who are you? What is your why? Can you tell it to me in a way that I'll understand as not a technical person? I am, I do not have a science background, although I do have a degree in political science, but not the same science that you all work in. Like, I need to know what you're doing in just a few sentences and feel like that's something that I can go tell my sixth grader. Like, not saying that everybody should be working at a sixth grade level, but I should be able to explain it to her and he'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. And that's usually, it's my sixth grader that I bounce these things off with. I'll, I'll ask her, do you understand what this means? She's like, yeah. Or I'll explain it to her again. She's like, I have, I have no idea. Um, also your elevator pitch. I think that's something that a lot of businesses struggle with. Like maybe they have one written, but is it really succinct and is it really efficient and is it effective? Um, that's also something that's very important. These things you might not think tie into your marketing efforts, but when you go to describe who you are in a 150 word description on a social media platform, can you do it? I have gone rounds and rounds with companies of like, all right, let's narrow it down again. All right, let's narrow it down again. Or when you apply for things where they need a description, whether you're presenting at a conference or you're going to a trade show, or you need something where they need your company name, your company website, and an X number of word description. How long do you spend working on putting that together? And do you reinvent the wheel every single time? Because that's like such a waste of your time as whatever role it is in your company. So as part of the brand audit, we come up with all of these as well as numbered characters so that you're like, oh, when it's time to apply for this or submit this, you go back to that document, boom, copy paste, and you feel good about it. You don't have to ask five other people for their approval before you put it in there. Like you feel solid and you're ready to go. Brand elements, that's your logo, an alternative logo. You can't always use a long horizontal logo. It doesn't always work. It's good to have just an icon version of it. It's good to have vertical, horizontal, black and white, full color. That way you're ready to go because say you get a media inquiry and they need a logo in a certain size and your logo is horizontal and they want to put it in a, let's say a 250 by 250 pixel box, like your logo is going to be real tiny through the middle and it's not going to be very attractive. Or if it's on a grid with other companies on a website, you're just going to be real tiny everybody else's is going to be bigger. Like you deserve that real estate on the website. So make sure you have logos that fit these different aspects. There's a bunch of other things on here that are things that I hope that you grow into meeting, especially as they relate to advertising, um, brand assets. Like maybe sometime we get back to normal and you go to trade shows and you need things like postcards or flyers or shipping material or case studies or things to hand out to people. But it's also good to consider some of those things as digital that you can email on as well. And they should all look consistent and be consistent with your brand, the, the tone, the voice, the color, the imagery, the graphics. Um, quick note about imagery. I'm, I'm a huge fan of building your own stock imagery. That way, your website photo doesn't look like somebody else's website photo because you both pulled it from Canva. I don't know. I'm just thinking that now. But it is good to build your own stock imagery. And there are some super talented, affordable photographers that can help curate stock photos for you that look like you, that look like your brand, that include your target audience in the imagery and, you know, I can help you put together a shot list. That way you're efficient with your time and you're efficient in asking for quotes. That way you have what you need and you get what you want in all different sizes, whether it's big or small or for web or whatever it might be. But I would consider that as you think about your marketing strategy moving forward. Very important part of the brand audit.
Any questions on step number five? Yeah. I have a question regarding the content, especially on the website. Yeah. Because sometimes you need to change in the content depending on the audience. I even the page how you how you say that you probably will change depending whether they are like scientific scientists or like or investors. But the content on the website is hard to change because like all people from all different backgrounds probably would read the same thing. I guess my question is how do you, what do you suggest to balance the complexity with the simplicity of the understanding? Because meanwhile, I need to capture as many people as possible, let's say without tech background you know, that are interesting, they are like high potential startup. But yeah. at the same time, I also need to capture those who really in this area know what you're doing and then try to get interest. Yeah, yeah. That, you explain very nicely the struggle of probably lots of other people in this room <laughs> when it comes to website. It's a very interesting balance to figure out how to have a website or a, um, a place that holds your content about you that speaks to different stakeholders, especially in, in, your, in the timeline of your business where you might be needing investors. And so you have information for them or very technical scientific information for the user that's going to need that. Or you have a different set of customers where that's too high level for them and they'll just bounce and that's it. Um, so <laughs> I'm actually going through this process. I was talking about with Rebecca as someone right now where we're coming up with a way that the website can put enough information to capture the attention of all those audiences on the homepage. We don't really have control over who's going to come to that because that is in all of your information is that homepage. But how can we then lay out the content in a way that targets each of those audience and different parts of the website? where we would share that link with them specifically for investors or for customers or, you know, find ways to where you, you start down here and build upon that based on who, who's going to be reading it. That way you don't lose them, but then you also have some consistency across all your pages. You don't lose your brand or give away too much information because you know, your competitors are looking at your website and if you put too much on there, then well, you, you might lose the race. So it's important to consider that also, or just giving them enough to hook them in to ask you for more when you can set up a meeting and discuss the specifics and you have a deck or something that you can share with them that speaks to exactly what they want. I don't know if that answers your question, but it, it, it takes a little bit of time to figure out what that will look like um, and coming up with a site map that works for you and thinking long-term of, all right, if we're gonna keep this website or this, this theme of whatever WordPress or other site you're using, like how can we grow with this as we adjust as a company and grow? Cause like I said, one of the things in the beginning is maybe you have a real slick website and it's working for you now, but the trajectory and the path that you're going over the next year could change and you need to make adjustments to it. And how easy is that going to be? So thinking ahead is also important. That actually is a good question for our um, sixth and final step in the brand audit process. Oh yes, um, your your goals. I have a little fillable worksheet for you where maybe your goal then is to think about your the content on your website and how that relates to your brand. Um, or I, I'd like you to use this sheet after we've gone through all of the steps after you've gone through all of these worksheets, either on your own or hopefully with others from your team and come up with a couple of goals. You can't do all the things at once because there might be a whole lot of things, but what are some couple, what are a couple goals that you can work on? And think about that in terms of motivations. Is there something coming up where achieving this goal would be really helpful and where you have a date of an event or a presentation or a meeting with a potential investor or a submission of a grant or something, that's your motivation. So work backwards from that. What are some things that we can knock out now? What are our goals to 
you know, and what are the motivations tied to that? And then think about what are some of the action steps that you can take and always include a deadline. Otherwise, this is never going to get done. And I know a lot of you wear a lot of different hats um, in the company. And so coming up with some deadlines is really helpful. Um, as I was putting this goal sheet together, I thought about Asana. Do any of you use Asana? My first encounter with Asana was I hated it because we were using it in a way that I felt like I am spending all my time coming up with goals and percentage of goals. And I can't even get the goal done because I'm putting all this crap in Asana. But now I'm using Asana in a different way of more of a project management, like goal setting, what are the subtasks, who's assigned to this and when is it due? And I thought, oh, Asana would be a great tool to use for goal setting for your brand audit of coming up with what is your goal What's the timeline? What are the actions to take? Yes. Oh, sure. Oh, I don't know if I can. Yes. It's a project management software tool. I don't know. A-S-A-N-A, if you're not familiar with it. A-S-A-N-A. I should have said. See, I use it all the time and just assumed you but it was because it's, I feel like it's techy. Um, but see, that was that was a total like brand fail right there. See how easy it is to do? Perfect example. Um, but I find it really helpful for these types of things where that way you don't have to take on all of the aspects of achieving that. I'm gonna do this part of my brand audit, like pull other people into it. So that way your teammates have a sense of investment in bringing your brand to the next level. It's not just you going rogue because that's how you probably got there in the first place. So have other people involved in the effort with you because that's gonna be really important and being consistent in your efforts. Um, so, yeah, I talked a lot. I can put one little thing oh. out there too. So certainly you can work with Hallie and PIR as we've said, we do have shared services, which has some limited capacity of what our students can do for you. but. The College of Media also has Brand Hub available. So they're taking on projects and student teams that can help with some of these elements too. So you don't have enough resources, consider some of the things through the university. Mm -hmm. Yes, don't be afraid to ask for help or don't be too proud to ask for help. Um, even the, even the best need some help sometimes, especially when you're so close to the, the product or the brand. Um, it's good to have some fresh eyes take a look. So now I gave you all of these worksheets and all these templates and tools, and now you have to go get to work. Um, but as you complete these elements um, of the, the brand audit, um, I hope you can identify some actions that your company can take to help strengthen your brand. Um, you'll hopefully uncover a lot of key findings that you can pair with the detailed action plan. And I hope these templates help you start to take some notes down. Um, I want you to, I do want you to keep in mind that you're gonna have to continually monitor your progress because just because you completed a goal, oh, and Asana, if you complete a goal, a unicorn shoots across the screen. So like, I know it feels like after that unicorn has shot across, like, you can walk away and you're done, but that's not really the case with your brand. Um, it, it would be good to consider ways that you can keep tabs on the progress that you've made over time. And if it's still relevant, I know a lot of companies and you probably do too, that had to shift a little bit in their brand because of COVID and the way they were doing business and maybe change some of their messaging or how they do business. So a lot of things can happen in a year and you might need to make some shifts in order to keep your brand um, where it needs to be. So do consider that moving forward. But now I hope I gave you some tools and some easy steps to conduct a brand audit and help you out. Yeah. Oh, and here's a picture of my whole face. I do have teeth. Yes. Uh, yeah. Can you share a little bit about some of the clients that you've worked with and that are startups? A few of ours. Yeah. Um, let's see. My first um, kind of entry into startup life was with Photonicare. 
and I was with them for five years. Um, I graduated them off of my client roster just in the past couple of months now that they are well beyond the needs of someone like me that helps like startups. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Psionic a couple of times. Oh, my 12 year old daughter really loves Psionic. She wrote in fifth grade that she wanted to work with Psionic when she grows up. So um, oh, other companies and there's so many that have come through through EIR um, referrals. I don't, I don't even know where to begin. Some of, I, I, some of the companies that I work with might not be super technical. They may be selling products in town or brick and mortar businesses. I do a lot of work with ag related businesses. Um, one of the many random hats that I wear is I'm president of the Illinois Farmers Market Association. So I work with a lot of farmers markets and startup businesses across the state that are trying to go to market to sell, um, which that's very endearing. That's such a passionate group of people, a lot of passion there. Um, so lots of, lots of different people, uh, lots of different companies. Um, that I, I love the referrals that I get through Enterprise Works and the Incubator Network because it's like you don't know what's coming next from like a surfing wave park idea to a laundromat and power washer to um, clean energy to oh, a woman that gives swim lessons. I mean, you name it. We've, we've tried to figure it out. So you guys don't know entrepreneurs all across the state, not just tech entrepreneurs. So we get a lot of random stuff that you may not expect that we're providing services to in Illinois. Yeah. It definitely keeps me on my toes. And I feel like I hope that helps me come to you with a broader perspective of the challenges that some of these other types of companies are facing and what's worked for them. Even if you might not think a laundromat and power washing company applies to you, like there are a lot of similarities in going through a brand audit and talking about marketing efforts. So. We did it in under an hour, even yes. with the delay. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I'm sure Natalie will hang around for a few minutes if you want to grab a second with her. But we appreciate all of you coming out today. And